Hey there, uh, this is Andrea Balboni, Sex, Love, and Relationships Coach, and I'm here today with Nikki Hodgson. Hi, hey, Nikki. thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> <laughs> and Nikki is a freelance journalist. She's fantastic and amazing. If you haven't read her work, she writes on sex and relationships. She's also been a dominatrix, and she is um, has worked for the dating industry as well. So some of the people that she writes for, some of the publications she writes for, are The Guardian, The Telegraph, The Times. She also broadcasts with the BBC, BBC Three, and um, Sky News. She's also on BBC Radio and has written a few books, which I will uh, put in the comments so you can check them out. They're fantastic. And also has done some documentaries. She's done loads, basically. <laughs> she is a pro. And I am so pleased to have her here today to talk about uh, sex, love, and relationships with us. Thank you so much for coming. Welcome. Okay, so let's talk about dating. So mm -hmm. dating has shifted and changed a lot, uh, very recently with technology. Yeah. And um, yeah, you've opened my eyes to a lot of what is going on behind the scenes with the tech companies, yeah. and the, specifically the companies that create dating apps. And so I felt it was beneficial for people watching to know what is going on um, behind the scenes so that they can be aware mm. and can um, just know how to navigate this, this new space that we're in with dating online. Yeah, really good questions. I mean, I didn't know very much about the tech side of things until I started working in the dating industry. Mm -hmm. And what became apparent to me very quickly is that even people with the best of intentions were running a business. And that's not because I think that all businesses are bad or that making money is evil. I'm not, I'm not that centralist. <laughs> I don't believe that at all. Okay. Um, but I think sometimes some of the people running the businesses can be quite naive maybe about what they are setting out to do. Mm. And in order to kind of drive traffic to the sites, to keep users active, they have to pull a lot of marketing tricks on people. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that's when the kind of slightly dubious ethics comes into play sometimes because the main issue for dating apps, and they're not all gamified, is that some of them are gamified. Mm -hmm. And by that, what I mean is that they have a number of um, user um, filters uh, built into the technology that are kind of triggering you to perform certain acts on them. So the swiping is a repetitive thing that spikes your dopamine and wants you to do more of it by um, withholding the, um, the benefit all the time or getting the result that you want mm. and so compelling you to just keep swiping until you get that ping and that ping of dopamine mm. so it's like a very it's a very simple system it's exactly like freak machines or gambling works okay. on the brain and uh, only you know we hope that it's worth more because it's somebody we might potentially have a relationship or fall in love with if we kind of keep zipping through all these yeah. thousands of profiles but what is also important to say is that we get cognitive overload around well between about five and nine profiles mm -hmm. so actually after you've swiped nine times you can't really make the wow, best decision wow nine times it's tiny isn't it i nine mean what times. is that That's nine like swipes. three seconds maybe oh no so, and it's going to get already and yeah. put it in those nine <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly yeah so that's really important to remember because um, I think we've all heard those stories of people that have gone on a date and then they've come back to the table and the person is actually on the app or they've gone home and realised the person never left the app while they were on the date with them. It isn't because they're a bad person, it is because they formed a bad habit with the mm. technology okay. and there's a very compulsive relationship going on there. Mm. So I think none of us wants to feel that we are enthralled to the tech and the only reason we've gone, you know, gone past, uh, you know, Diana, Luke, John... <laughs> Winston, <laughs> I don't know his names are but the reason we bypass those names is because of the technology hooking us in to kind of look for something better you know mm, okay. um nobody really wants to think that's what's happening but kind of it is some of the time okay so mm. I think limiting your time on apps is really really important if you want to be able to respect the person behind the pixels is what I always say mm, to people okay so yeah. So stalking someone after you've just met them isn't perhaps the, the most doesn't give you the <laughs> actual isn't an actual reflection of if they've had a good time. No, or it could just be a compulsive. It behavior. could just be compulsive behavior, and they could have just formed a really bad habit, like the way they would go to a fruit machine or the way they would play a computer game, mm. and it's not necessarily a reflection of you. Okay. Because what we hope is that that person finds us and is saying, "Oh, I've deleted the app. I never want to go back <laughs> on there again. This is the person." But it just doesn't work like that because you've formed a habit. Yeah. 
So, yeah. um, so don't worry too much if that happens, is one okay. of the things I would say. Okay. Uh, I used to be really kind of particular about that when I was dating myself, mm. um, and would get into kind of complete rage if I found out that somebody was still on the app after three days. Yeah. But I've got a much more balanced relationship, got kind of attitude with it now, mm. and I sort of just think it's just a habit most of the time. Yeah. With people. Okay. Yeah. So the person that you may have gone on a date with doesn't have an obsessive compulsive uh, no. problem either. It's very human it's response okay. to the technology. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the tech is designed in such a way that it does yeah. feed that. Obsessive it's absolutely compulsive. designed for that. And then all the marketing communications are the same. So mm. when you've been on the app, if you've ever said you've been on a date, some apps let you kind of say that you've done that, most of them don't. But they'll be tracking you and they'll be waiting to prompt you to go on another date, if not okay. with that person, with another person. Okay. So if they think you've been on a date, then expect some kind of marketing email that's saying, hey, <laughs> you know, hey, Roger, was that a great day or not? Ready to go again? What about one of these three lovely options? Mm. And, and it's all systemized. It's all mapped out. It's all planned. Okay. And the other thing that's important to say is that most apps want you to be on there between 18 months and two and a half years. Okay. What they want you to do is have a series of short-term relationships with you always going back onto the app to find the next person. Mm. They don't want you to find love okay. instantaneously. That would be despite really, what they say. Despite what they say, that would be a terrible business model for them. Mm -hmm. They would lose a massive amount of money and traction. And what they rely on, a bit like the old-fashioned diet industry, is you using their system to find love. And always coming back okay. to the system to find it. Okay. Yeah. So top mm, three tips of, of kind of duping this thing. Yeah, so one is massively limit your time. Yep. So don't give yourself any more than 10 minutes a day. Okay. 10 minutes is plenty. Okay. One minute a day is actually plenty. Oh, so but tempting yeah. to do more. So tempting. Yeah. But then when you've got a few people and you've got a bit of chat going, focus on those people okay. and see what you can do with that. Don't go above five to nine okay. options. You'll find a figure that works for you, but don't go above nine. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what the neuroscientists say anyway. It's not me. And then, yeah take some time I don't the googling thing is interesting so people have different opinions about whether you should stay on an app or get off it as quickly as possible and there's yeah. different reasons for doing both so getting off it means that you're not hooked into the endless options from the dating company mm -hmm. and the marketing emails etc if you find someone you really like I still recommend just deleting the app temporarily because your profile will still exist mm -hmm. you can reactivate it but you've just got rid of the temptation. Yeah. And just wait to see how that pans out. If it doesn't pan out well, then you can go back on the app, fair enough. Okay. But I think that's the best thing you can do for someone. There are obviously security reasons why you might, might want to stay on the app rather than giving your phone number to someone. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that I would say is that um, if you've already given out a certain amount of personal information about you, maybe there's a picture of you, etc., and your name, then they can probably track you anyway. Mm -hmm. So I know lots of people think, oh, if I go onto WhatsApp or I go onto just... Uh, normal texting or phoning them then they're going to have too much access to me yeah but it's actually very easy to just block a number you right. know they can't find out where you live from uh, your phone number mm. important mm. to remember okay but actually if you're on a dating app and maybe you're you have your instagram account uh, attached mm -hmm. they might be able to see all the kinds of places you go week to week and actually gather more information about you yeah so i think the safety thing some people feel more comfortable staying on the app the app will certainly help you if you get into trouble with someone mm -hmm. But they will equally, if you had a complaint about somebody and you would you moved to WhatsApp, they would also still help you. Yeah. So it. it's, it's yeah. a personal choice in that way. There's benefits for both. Okay. Yeah. You and I discussed how we both met our partners yeah. on, <laughs> on dating apps. <laughs> on dating apps, yeah. even though the stats are very dire yeah. on people who actually do. So we're a bit of the exception. Yeah. And we also kind of shared why we think they worked for us. So I was wondering if you might share a little bit on why you think <laughs> it worked for you. Yeah, I mean, I just think I've got to a stage in my life where I've done the work, as we say. Um, I've been to therapy. I'd analysed quite closely why I kept being having the same kind of relationship and mm -hmm. what had gone wrong about those relationships, what they had in common with them. And I took a real different tap when I met my fiancé. Mm -hmm. But... As I've said, and I've probably said it to him as well, it was a lot of luck for him in the timing because I think he could have been a few different people at mm -hmm. that point. Okay. And I say that in the nicest possible way. He's <laughs> absolutely special and yeah. I wouldn't want him to be anyone else in any 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 way. Yeah. But certainly at the beginning, he could have been a few people. He could have manifested in, in a few different ways, is yeah. what I mean by that. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because it's important to remember when you're dating that there isn't just this one person. Mm -hmm. There really isn't. 
There's a, any number of people that could be perfectly right for you and you can have a perfectly good relationship with. Mm. And, and that's important to have in mind because it will stop you feeling desperate if the one person you're dating that you're really into doesn't work out. There's going yeah. to be someone else. It's just a matter of being open and having done the work, as we mm. say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I feel the same for myself. Yeah. yeah, I've done so much work on myself, like you're saying, that... It was kind of there was a it felt felt like there was a wider spectrum of people that, exactly. that could work, um, and so what do you feel like makes the difference for you? That's really interesting. I think people will often say whenever I have coached somebody and they've said to me, "Oh, you know, I need them to be this, 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 this," you know, and it's just because I'm really fussy, I'm really particular, uh-huh. and I say no, it's because what you're doing is you're shutting it down, you're trying to make it as difficult as possible because. You've got a block somewhere. Mm. Maybe you don't feel that you're ready to find love. Maybe you're not over a previous relationship. Or you are just making it so difficult for the other person that you don't have to examine yourself and kind of the reasons why it hasn't worked in the past. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're quite difficult things to say to somebody if they're yeah. convinced, oh, it's just because I've got a high standard. Yeah. But it's actually quite an avoidant thing to do. Mm-hmm. So um, I think in terms of what made the difference for me personally, it was definitely pulling away from the fire, as I call it. Mm -hmm. So I used to be somebody that would always be compelled by like a really hot, overwrought sexual connection with somebody. I had to be absolutely consumed by them Mm -hmm. from the first moment that I met them for it to be worthy of pursuit. Mm. And invariably what happened is those things burnt out very quickly. The other person was often not interested in me in more than a sexual way. And then Mm -hmm. I would get really hurt and then Mm. it'd be back to square one and I would do it all over again. So for me, it was a case of when I met my partner, who I absolutely adore, I thought he was super handsome and super great, there wasn't this really hot charge at the beginning. And that was something that grew. And it was worth waiting for, but it was also worth listening after the first day and thinking, hmm, well, there wasn't that really weird energy that you usually have, so maybe it is worth pursuing because (laughs) it's not going to be the same thing. Yeah. So that was really the key for me. That's what really changed it for me. Amazing. <laughs> and if someone is repeating and repeating patterns mm. over and over again, um, what do you recommend that they do? I mean, the best thing that I always say to people when they say, oh, I really want to meet someone, what should I invest in? And I always say a therapist. Mm-hmm. A really good sex and relationship therapist mm. is, you know, think about the couple of hundred pounds you might spend on them uh, at the beginning and the lifelong return that you will get if you can crack through some of those bad patterns and find someone you can have a connection with. Yeah. I don't think you can put a price on that personally. Yeah. Obviously, everybody has a different budget. So the other thing that I would recommend is learning about attachment theory. Mm-hmm. So if yeah. you can do some reading, it's really simple psychological theory about how we love just children, the bonds we form mm-hmm. to our caretakers and how they affect who we can love when we're adults and how we love. Mm-hmm. If you can do some reading on attachment theory, it might just blow your mind and change your life. Amazing. That for me again was, that was something I learned in therapy mm-hmm. and that really tipped everything upside down for me yeah. in a really positive way. Yeah, okay. One thing that you would recommend reading is there anything in particular or um hmm, that's a really good Maybe question just googling it and seeing what yeah happens. there is a really good book that's just called attachment it's mm-hmm. written by two therapists i forget their names but we can put the title in okay. in the video for people yeah. and uh, i think it's called attached actually yeah attached okay. and that's a recent book and it just takes a few case studies of people and explains what they were doing wrong mm-hmm. you can see it as you're reading it you know exactly where it's <laughs> going to go uh, which is actually quite reassuring because it yeah. tells you actually you've got a lot more awareness than you think you have how mm. people do attached to each other mm. and then it gives you tips at the end of each chapter which you can um, take on board and then exercise this little exercise you can do with yourself looking back at your past relationships mm-hmm. being honest about where the good things were where the bad things were and then yeah work basically identifying your attachment style and then pulling into the centre, as we call it, so like pulling into secure Mm -hmm. rather than avoidant or anxious on the other side. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for this. Yeah, you're welcome. Incredible. (laughs) (laughs) Really fun speaking with you. And um, yeah, thanks so much. It's been great. Yeah. (laughs) Yay.